Tigeran. Madam Chair, uh, Dr. Lambert David will uh, make the presentation for uh, for all of us. Thank you. Po. Okay, uh, Dr. Lambert. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, permission to share the slides. And nakikita na po yung slides ko po. Please proceed, Dr. Lambert. Yes. yes, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning to the honorable members of the committee and to everyone. I'm Dr. Lambert David, the Acting Senior Manager of Standards Monitoring Department, and I will discuss the temporary suspension of payment of claims. So first, these are the legal basis for uh, the policy. One is the IRR of the National Insurance Act. Uh, nakalagay po doon, all completed claims except those under investigation shall be paid within 60 calendar days from the receipts of the corporation. Second, second basis, the PhilHealth rules on administrative cases involving healthcare providers, members, and PhilHealth employees. The fact-finding investigation department or the PhilHealth regional office shall recommend temporary suspension of payment of claims and or withdrawal of accreditation contract in accordance with the policy issuance of the corporation on the existence of fraud, abuse of authority, and unethical practices of a healthcare, pro a healthcare provider. Third, uh, the COA rules on updated guidelines for the prevention and disallowance of irregular, unnecessary, excessive, extravagant, and consensual expenditures, which says, uh, which emphasizes the policy that government funds and property shall be fully protected and conserved. Such expenditures or use of such funds, funds or property should be prevented. Your Honor, the circular covers all healthcare institution, healthcare provider networks, and healthcare professionals. Now, the TSPC is a conditional suspension of payment for claims undergoing investigation. Let me emphasize, po, this is not a penalty, but a preventive measure to avoid loss or wastage of funds due to fraudulent acts, unethical acts, and abuse of authority. So, what, so these are the grounds for the issuance of the TSPC, which incidentally, po, these are the offenses as defined under the uh, UHC Act, po, 1RA11223. So I think uh, this was discussed uh, by, Madam, um, uh, by Madam Chair. Uh, ito po yung previous policy on the TSPC. So uh, Circular 2016-026 and, circul and Circular 2018-0019. So ang um, gusto lang nami pakita po dito is how we presented previously yung TSPC and that it is existent since 2016-026. So siguro po hindi ko na siya uh, uulitin po dahil na-discuss na po ni Madam Chair ito po uh, word by word. Pero let me emphasize lang po yung number 10 kasi mamaya makikita nyo po ano yung importance ng number 10. So nakalagay po sa lumang circular under number 10 HCPs with adverse monitoring findings and serve a suspension of payment shall be subject to probationary accreditation for six months. In case the remaining accreditation period is less than six months, the probationary accreditation shall extend to the remaining I shall extend to the next accreditation period. So yun lang po yung siguro uh, anuhin natin dahil mamaya po discuss ko bakit importante po siya. So ito po yung guidelines. So I discussed po the old. Ito po yung bago, the guidelines po. And also, also this was discussed by uh, our Honorable uh, Madam Chair. So ito po yung grounds of, for the issue of the TSPC I have already mentioned. The notice of finding shall be issued by the concerned HC, to the concerned HCP 
by PhilHealth VP or RVPs or the FAFAID of the central office as part of the investigation process. The HCP shall be required to file an answer within a non-extendable period of three calendar days from receipt. If the answer to the notice of finding lacks merit or no answer has been filed within the prescribed period, a TSPC order shall be recommended in the investigation report. A TSPC order shall be approved by the president and CEO. If no action is taken, is thereon taken within 30 days from receipt of such recommendation, the same. Dr. Lambert, be, yes, Dr. Dr. Lambert, can you skip that since I presented that? Ah, sige, sige, Mr. Okay. Chair. Ay, yeah. Madam Chair, sorry po. I will skip that po. So ito din po na this siguro po I will not read it pero explain the provision. So this was also already mentioned by Madam Chair. Yung number 1 po meaning lahat po ng claims na naka-feel health ito po sa akop ng TSPC order. Num yung number 2 po lahat po ng parating na claim na hindi pa natatanggap ng ni feel health ito po ay sakop din ng TSPC order. So iyon po yung ibig sabihin po ng uh, item number one and item number two. Doon po sa TSPC shall apply to a specific set of claim. Ang ibig sabihin po, uh, pwede pong yung specific population na pwedeng ma-impose ng TSPC, specific population of claim. Kung, kung yung claim or yung finding can extend to the whole facility. For example po, yun nga nasabi earlier, ghost patient, may ghost patient na na-detect yung regional office namin for pneumonia, UTI, hypertension, kumbaga halo-halo. So, ang pwedeng gawin po ng regional office namin, ITSPC yung buong claim niya. Kasi, kalat po siya, uh, spread, it's rampant. So, lahat po ng claim, pwede ma-TSPC. Pero po, yung second bullet, kung nakita po ng regional office namin, it's only for a particular case. For example, hospital siya, may dialysis service, pero nakita niya may pattern doon lang sa mga dialysis claim. Po, ang daming-daming dialysis claim na puro ghost uh, claim, for example po. So, pwede niyang i-TSP silang po yung dialysis claim. So, hindi niya gagalawin yung buong claim ng hospital, yung dialysis claim lang po. So, yun po yung intent nung, uh, yun yung po yung ibig sabihin ng dalawang provision na ito po. So, PhilHealth will continue to receive and process all claims with the SPC order, but yung payment lang will be put on hold. So, 120 days po yung duration nito. Uh, kung nag-lapse na po yung 120 days at hindi pa po natatapos yung, for example, investigation, pwedeng uh, mag-extend ng 90 days doon lang sa mga claim na inimbestigahan. Pero yung pumapasok na claim na bago after the 120 days will be processed accordingly na. So yun po yung, yun yung, yun po yung sakop ng extension ng 90 days. Yung lang pong naimbestigahan. So payment of claims covered by the TSPC but cleared from fraud or irregular activities will commence po on the 121st day. So ito po yung matrix to para simple ma-simplify lang po, mapakita ko po, yung difference ng dalawang circular, uh, yung pertinent difference. So, sa old circular po, wala, hindi po kami nag issue ng notice of finding para makasagot po yung hospital or any facility. Pero dito po sa new circular, in-indicate na po namin na mag issue ng notice of finding at the facility is given three days to uh, refute that uh, uh, to refute the finding. Secondly, the TSPC order shall be approved by, by the PCO. So first circular po, as uh, read earlier, wala pong nakalagay. So our VP, VP, anyone can approve uh, the TSPC. Pero yun nga, sabi po ng aming presidente, para talagang may control, hindi arbitrary yung pag-impose ng TSPC, Sa new circular po, siya lang po yung may sole authority to approve a TSPC order. Next po, ito po yung na-mention ko earlier, yung number 10 sa old circular. HCPs with adverse monitoring findings and service suspension of claims shall be subject to probation accredit accreditation for six months. Nakalagay po to sa lumang circular, 
pero tinanggal po namin sa new circular. So wala na po siya sa new circular. Uh, next po, yung, yung offenses, fraudulent acts, unethical and abuse of authority, ito po kasi nakalagay sa UHC. So wala po siya sa luma. Inal inalign lang po namin yung mga offenses na to uh, to the circular. Kumbaga, in-update po namin. So, and the last po is uh, sa old circular, uh, TSPC can be applied both for quality or legal findings. So, quality, meaning yung non-fraud. For example, uh, uh, inappropriate drugs, inappropriate lab, or use of non-PNF, pwede naman TSPC sa old. Because that's quality. Pero sa new po, hindi na po uh, kasama ang quality findings sa TSPC. Sa new po, legal findings na lang po talaga ang pwede mag-TSPC. So, yun po yung difference ng old and new. So, ito po yung status kung ilan po yung mga na-TSPC namin throughout the years. So, for 2019 on onwards, only 20 health facilities and 6 professionals were issued TSPC. Meron po tayong apat na pending of issuance of TSPC. So, may apat pa pong pending. Of these 20 po, uh, 18 are hospitals, 10 are dialysis clinic, 2 are maternity line-in, tapos of course, the 6 professionals are 6 doctors. So, pantitignan po natin, as of July 31, 2021, PhilHealth has a total of 9,496 accredited providers. So, kung out of the 20, only 0.21% lang po ang naisyuhan ng TSPC. Tapos up to, up to date po, as of today, uh, pen, uh, aside from the four pending, wala pong naka-impose na TSPC po ang PhilHealth. So thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair. Uh, tapos na per presentation ko. Thank you po. Thank you, Dr. David. Can we hear now from uh, Philippine Hospital Association, Dr. Almora? Dr. Almora. Good, mor good morning, Madam Chair. Yes. Good morning, sir. Good, good morning to the members, the, the honorable members of this committee and all those who are present here uh, in this uh, hearing. Um, I have prepared here, Madam Chair, a statement of our healthcare providers. And uh, uh, this, uh, what I'm going to read, read is actually more of a distress call to improve our engagement with PhilHealth. May I be allowed to share, Mr. Madam Chair? Okay. Okay, so we have here a public statement of healthcare providers uh, on Pill Health Circular 2021-0013. A distress, distress call to improve engagement with PhilHealth. Uh, let me start off by saying that uh, uh, the, the, the problem came about not so much as to the content of the circular, but more so with the timing and uh, the presence of a cloud of uh, mistrust and a big suspicion on the intent and purpose of the circular. So let me uh, read our statement, Madam Chair. On August 19, 2021, PhilHealth Circular 2021-0013, with date signed August 13, 2021, found its way to the social media accounts of healthcare providers. The circular arose the attention and indignation of healthcare providers because of its title, Temporary Suspension of Payment of Claims. The provisions of interest in the circular are the following. It was presented already a while ago, but let me just uh, point out uh, why the uh, healthcare providers are complaining and are angry. Because uh, under, under uh, Section 8, uh, Paragraph 1, it, uh, it, it mentions about all affected identified claims already in the position of field health that have not been paid, including those refiled. Okay, so uh, it affects all claims which uh, may be similar, uh, uh, the identified, and if, if they are identified, if there are similar claims, then uh, it will all be affected for that institution. So for example, a COVID claim 
once it is uh, ruled to be further it can affect all the claims in that hospital and on paragraph two affected identified claims that will be submitted to field health after issue once of tspc but before the lifting of the expiration of the tspc so the word will madam chair is the future future claims and uh, how do we know that these are those future claims are fraudulent so there is no determination of fraud yet and yet they are already subject to tspc under paragraph uh, uh, section i on the extent of tspc it can either be all claims of the concerned ECP when the findings can extend to other claims. Uh, this can affect all claims of that uh, uh, hospital, Madam Chair. And if we are talking of COVID claims, one COVID claim can affect all, can be, can, all the COVID claims can be affected. And all claims of a specific condition or procedure when the findings are particular or exclusive to such condition or procedure. Again, Madam Chair, uh, it, it is a sweeping, it is a sweeping uh, accusation or a, a conviction of fraud to add that extends not only to that specific claim, but also to other claims and to all the claims of that hospital, that institution. So uh, this is very uh, alarming, Madam Chair, and. Uh, it 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 brings about a suspicion of uh, different intent and mistrust. Considering that uh, the 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 determination of fraud in the filing of cases against the hospital and TSPC is an ongoing process. It is there. It is uh, an ongoing process, and those uh, claims that are identified the fraudulent are uh, are being uh, heard in the quasi judicial processes. And they are being prosecuted and an arbitration is being done and uh, the corresponding punishment are being given so uh, we 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 have a strong doubt why the uh, the timing of this uh, the, uh, the release of this uh, circular on uh, our statement number two Madam Chair, the hospitals and doctors were alarmed they were naturally piqued the circular came at a time when the hospitals and healthcare providers are suffering under the following prevailing conditions. Uh, letter A, there is a lot, there is a fatigue and exhaustion from a prolonged fight with the surging COVID-19 and its variants, serving and caring unselfishly so that others may live. Currently, situations present added challenges to hospitals as there is severe shortage of nurses made worse by surge in rainy season related diseases such as gastroenteritis, respiratory tract infection dengue and influenza and typhoid and uh, letter b financial hardships from the failure of field health to pay substantial number of covid 19 claims effectively denying hospital the capability to upgrade and expand facility to deal with surge of patients as of the period from january 2020 to june 2021 the data from field health shows that there is a total of 86.1 billion pesos of field health claims not paid to the hospitals comprising of in-process claims which is 25.7 billion return to hospital uh, which is about 46.6 billion and denied claims which is 13.8 billion uh, the denied claims madam chair uh, these are the, the, the this represents the cases that the hospitals have managed and therefore the hospitals have and the professionals have spent for these cases and because they have not yet received the payment so we lump them together madam chair and uh, that's where the 86.1 billion uh, came up let us see frustration and hopelessness due to the absence of explanation from PhilHealth on their failure to pay COVID-19 claims, despite their ability to pay non-COVID claims, although this, there is a slight delay for the non-COVID claims. And letter D, heartaches due to inability of hospital to respond adequately to the demands of its health workers for higher pay and hazard pay because of the long delay in reimbursements from PhilHealth aggravated by the denial of claims. Number three, Madam Chair, the PhilHealth circular was released amid mounting pressure for PhilHealth to pay hospitals. 
uh, there is a lot of pressure uh, being uh, directed towards field health to pay from uh, agencies such as uh, the Anti-Red Tip Authority, the, this committee, Madam Chair, the North Luzon Development Quadrangle, the local government of uh, Iloilo, uh, and uh, the media. The, uh, every, uh, almost everybody is pressuring uh, Phil Health to pay, and then all of a sudden, this circular came about. And number four, questions were raised by most uh, healthcare providers as regards to the timing of the issuance of the circular. And these are the questions that being raised immediately when they read the circular, the healthcare providers wrote, uh, uh, posted the question in our chat group. And they say, is it a strategy to turn the table and put the blame on the hospitals by declaring that the claims are fraudulent, unethical and done with abuse of authority and therefore subject to temporary suspension of payment. And uh, also some were saying or asking if it could be, could it be a delay, delaying tactic or an escape strategy from paying because of lack of funds for field help? Many PHC members have expressed their intention to close their hospitals because of mounting losses. Others plan to stop admitting patients to prevent more losses. Many have thought of disengaging from their contract to provide credit to field health and instead charge directly from patients and allow patients to reimburse directly to field health. They thought that they do not have financial risk protection from field health. Let me show a time uh, the, 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 the trend of events, Madam Chair, that uh, led to the uh, mounting pressure or uh, the burden, the financial burden that was being heaped upon uh, the hospitals is starting with the pandemic. So with the start of the pandemic, there was a massive capital outlay to improve capability of hospitals to respond to the surge of COVID cases. They have to uh, expand their ICU, they have to build more uh, uh, isolation units, they have to repurpose their triads, they have to buy uh, PPEs, and then, uh, came the uh, PC Circular 2020-009, which uh, declares a no copay for COVID cases. Uh, although the uh, case rates are, are high, but then for those severe and critical cases, the, the case rate is not really enough and there is a need to recover for the hospital to recover their expenses. So there is a need for a copay. Uh, so another uh, that's another second burden, financial burden, Madam Chair. And uh, number three is the retroactive non-payment of probable COVID claims in PC 2021, the 008, which uh, uh, provide that uh, the, the probable claims will not be paid starting in November, despite the circular being released in June. And number four, Madam Chair, that's the third burden. Number Another burden, Madam Chair, is the removal of the efficiency gain by resorting to pay for service for cases with actual benefit below the case rate. Uh, this is uh, what we used to do before we transition to the, the old case rate. We used to pay uh, services through the pay for service. So basically, uh, the old case rate now has become a pay for service if it is below the case rate and the case rate if it, the actual expenses is above the, the case rate. This is in P P P circular 2021-0012. And then there's another circular where there is a payment recovery where they can pay and then later they can take it back. And number six is the continuing non-payment of COVID claims without clear explanation from PhilHealth why they are processing non-COVID claims, but practically no processing of COVID claims. So this is the biggest problem because of uh, the continuous and mounting and ballooning uh, non-payment of COVID claims, another, uh, uh, the biggest uh, burden. And number seven is the mounting operational costs due to increase in salary of nurses and other hospital workers. We have a severe shortage of nurses and there are a lot of the threats from nurses that they are going to resign because they, are, they have been exhausted and uh, they fear also for their lives. And so there are a lot of uh, uh, application for resignation and uh, that forces the hospitals to increase the salary of nurses and with that increase in the salary of nurses comes the request from other hospital workers 
our medtech, our radtech, our pharmacists who are also uh, 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 four-year degree holders like the nurses and they are also demanding increase in uh, pay. In fact, in my hospital, Madam Chair, uh, our, my medtechs actually went on, on a strike. Uh, they did not report for work until after we have offered them an increase in, uh, in salary. And number eight, Chair, there is a temporary suspension of payment of uh, claims, and this is the final straw, Madam Chair. This, uh, the circular becomes the proverbial straw that finally broke the camel's back. There was a build-up, this is a build-up of uh, financial stress, financial uh, uh, burden on the hospitals that has been mounting. And then uh, while, we were, while we were waiting for the payment of these claims, instead of what we received, as a, we, we received uh, the circular about temporary suspending payment. We would like to make an analogy, Madam Chair. The hospitals are like the uh, carabao, the, the carabao of our farmers, our uh, beast of burden. If uh, for us who are familiar with how farmers work, we see a carabao pulling a plow. And uh, if the farmer is, does not uh, really take care of his carabao, he will not allow the carabao to feed. There's no food, he will not allow the carabao to drink. So the carabao would be, you know, wishing for a chance to be drink for, for food. But instead of uh, receiving food or drink, he would receive a whip. So that is what has happened. The whip here, Madam Chair, is the PC Circular 2021-0013. It's more of the timing, Madam Chair, than, rather than the content. So let me, let me go back. Okay. Uh, may I continue something? Oops, sorry. After a prolonged deliberation of the board of directors and officers of the Philippine Hospital Association, uh, with the presence of uh, the president and some officers of the Private Hospital Association of the Philippines and the president of the Philippine Medical Association and other healthcare providers, um, they decided to review their engagement with PhilHealth and continue to negotiate with PhilHealth towards the following goals. And this is to and uh, to ask for an improvement in the engagement that we have with PhilHealth. The first is to, to ask PhilHealth to, uh, by avoid, to avoid bias and unfair evaluation of reimbursement claims. And we propose that they use qualified and knowledgeable claims evaluators uh, in the investigation of alleged fraudulent claims. It would be desirable that PhilHealth will commission qualified medical experts to active uh, uh, that are in active practice to do the investigation of claims before we, pro we proclaim them as fraudulent. So we therefore need to amend the, the circular. And a second is, uh, uh, we would like to ask that uh, we refrain from oppressive or abusive use of the quasi-judicial power. Due process, um, as it is always being said, is be better served by submitting cases for arbitration to a third party, which is impartial and unbiased. This is done in the regular court of law. An alternative process that we would like to suggest is to introduce a jury system comprised of medical experts in active practice who can rule objectively and impartially on the proper management of a patient. So we need to amend the procedures and rules of administrative cases or the, the PRO Act. Madam Chair, uh, the, the present situation is that uh, if we are to say due process uh, for the fraud cases, the complainant is feel held, the, the, the prosecutor is feel held, the arbiter is feel held, and the executioner is feel held. There is no third party and bias and impartial here, Madam Chair. So 
uh, we we really take it with a grain of salt the word due process because without improving the way we uh, we the rules and procedures in uh, arbitrating for administrative cases uh, we really do not have a due process Madam Chair, and we want that to be improved and uh, third what we would like to be to exercise restraint on unfounded accusation of fraud and unethical practice because this will undermine and destroy the trust and confidence of patients toward their doctors and healthcare in general trust and confidence is the only cord the only bond that exists between a patient and a doctor a patient in a hospital so by coming up with the posters uh, asking patients to report uh, anomalies of doctors this will unnecessarily inject in their mind that uh, the doctors are doing fraud and it will hurt the very reason why there is a patient uh, doctor relationship and we will come to a situation like what we are having for the those who does not believe in vaccination because there was a lot of mis mistrust being generated by fake news and experts who just uh, uh, you know announce make pronouncements against vaccination number uh, four madam chair is to remove policies that create too much financial risk for hospital so that they can proceed to improve and upgrade their hospital services without fear of suddenly losing their huge investment unfounded accusations and lack of due process in field health leading to denial withdrawal or termination of accreditation of hospitals can suddenly kill a hospital co-payment and balance billing should be allowed in private hospitals except of course the 10 percent in basic accommodation that was mentioned in the universal health care law to allow profitability as the driver to better health services madam chair uh, in the computation of uh, case rate in the it's uh, health, health technology assessment uh, where they are going to come up with the cost of services we would like to propose that uh, we will uncouple the government from the private hospitals we should not uh, compute for uh, uh, the cost that would apply to both because uh, certainly madam chair the cost in the government is different from the private in the capital outlay alone uh, the the money the, the source of the money for the capital outlay is different from the government and in the private in the private it comes from a bank and therefore or uh, an investment from the doctors and therefore there is a need for a return of investment which is unlike again in the government and so the the rate of return is also different chair and so we cannot possibly give finance uh, there is no financial risk for private if we keep on uh treating the government and private alike because uh, uh that would cause unprofitability to the private hospitals and number five installing a representative of healthcare provider in the governing board endorsed by their national associations as provided for in section 13.1.c of the irr of the universal healthcare law madam chair uh it is so provided in the law that within 60 days there should be uh, a nomination of uh, uh, board of directors from the sectoral the expert sector and the uh, ex officio sector to be presided over by the gocc uh, uh, we want madam chair to be given the chance to endorse our own representative in the field health board so that our voices will be heard and number six we want an increase in case rate as provided for in section 10.4 of the universal healthcare law which state that for every increase in the rate of contribution of direct contributors and premium subsidy of indirect contributors field health shall provide for a corresponding increase in benefits subject to financial sustainability provided that field health shall contribute with the dbm on the budgetary requirement for such an increase and lastly madam chair 
the 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 very reason uh, of uh, our our uh, anguish is the payment for our COVID reimbursement claims, and uh, we 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 want to ask for an immediate payment for those claims. <clears throat> Uh, as regards the word about uh, this engagement, Madam Chair, uh, we, we decided that uh, any member hospital or healthcare professional who shall be affected adversely by the circular may review independently its engagement with field health and decide which is best for their situation. So uh, the word engagement, Madam Chair, is about the ability the, because the engagement of the hospitals is to provide credit sales, magpautang sa PhilHealth. That is the engagement of the hospitals. But if the hospital will find out that they have no more to make pautang, they cannot extend credit anymore. Wala na siyang ilang pera para ipautang sa PhilHealth. Then uh, we allow them. Uh, we, we, they, they have they have to decide on their own if they will have to stop giving credit that's 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 the essence of this engagement madam chair uh, <clears throat> so uh, uh, in, uh, in, in as a as a as a as a summary madam chair let me present my summary here uh, i think this one Uh, so these are the issues, Madam Chair, to improve engagement with PhilHealth. On the determination of fraud, fraud we, because that is the issue in this uh, uh, circular, we want qualified medical experts to determine. We know that uh, in PhilHealth, they, lack also, they also lack manpower, especially the doctors who will evaluate the cases, and most of them are actually nurses. So before uh, cases to be the... the uh, uh, considered uh, to be uh, filed as fraud, then we need the qualified medical experts to evaluate. And uh, second, this is just a, the summary, Madam Chair, the administration of due process. We want a third party, unbiased and impartial, or uh, the, 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 the implementation of a jury of medical experts. And number three, financial risk protection for hospitals. We, we need to uncouple the private hospital from the government hospitals in the computation of the case rates. And number four, number four the representation of uh, our healthcare providers in the PhilHealth Board and the increase in case rate and the immediate payment of COVID claims. These are our, uh, our uh, proposals, Madam Chair, to improve our engagement with PhilHealth. We do not intend to fight because we know that for the interest of the Filipino people, we need to work together. And uh, we are here to willing to work together. But then there is a lot of there is a lot of improvement on our engagement that has to be addressed, Madam Chair. And uh, also let me close by stating that uh, uh, we have all reasons to believe that the PCO, Dan, uh, Tony Dantigran of PhilHealth, has all intentions, and we know that he is sincere in uh, trying to find ways to pay the hospitals. So we, we, that gives us hope that we can find a solution to this problem, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Jaime Almora. Before we proceed, I just wanna recognize the presence of the following members. We have Representative Miki Villago, Vice Chair Rep. Uh, Joette Garcia, Representative Diego T, Representative Strike Revilla, DS West Gachalian, Vice Chair Ruth Mariano Hernandez, and Representative Arlene Brosas. So before I call on the first interpolator, I have a few questions lang sa PhilHealth. No? Uh, number one, I think, is the, the rationale behind for coming up with uh, this uh, circular. I just want to ask PhilHealth, what does not seem to be working in the previous circular? Ano po yung nakita nyo na dahilan? No? Is there an event or circumstances na 
kung bakit kailangan nating i-revise, i-amend, o uh, i-repeal, particularly yung letter H of uh, 2018-009. Uh, anyone from PhilHealth? PhilHealth. Madam Chair, yes. Dr. David po. Dr. David, yes. Yes, yes, yes po. Uh, the reason, <clears throat> excuse me po, <clears throat> uh, like I, like I uh, showed with the matrix po, the reason we wanted to... Madam Chair, may I interject, Madam Chair? Yes, can, uh, can, can uh, Dr. David show Lumber. his... Uh, yeah. Uh, show his video? Kasi ang hirap naman... Madam Chair na nagsasalita, tapos walang video. Dr. David, can you turn on the video? Baka hindi pa naligo si Dr. David. Okay na. Okay Ayun, na po. Okay, there. Na. okay po. Please proceed. Yes, thank you Madam Chair. Uh, the reason is, uh, if you can see nga yung matrix na pinakita ko, one is, dati kasi immediately na-impose yung TSPC at nagre-reklamo -re talaga yung mga provider, hindi daw sila na-inform na may TSPC silang, uh, may TSPC order. So immediately na-impose po dati. So uh, with the new circular, ninagyan po namin ng uh, three days na sumagot po yung mga uh, facility or doctors involved uh, kung dapat ba ma-impose yung TSPC. So, number one po yun. Next is, yun nga po, uh, in-avoid po namin yung, like sinabi po ni Dr. Anumora earlier, baka ma yung, there might be a perception or misconception na baka abuse, abusuhin po ng PhilHealth itong TSPC. Sa dating provision po kasi na circular, wala pong nakalagay doon kung sino mag approve uh, Even the RVP uh, can approve or the VP. Pero dito po sa bagong circular po natin, uh, nilagay po talaga natin, yung sole authority will be for uh, si president lang po namin ang pwede mag approve So, in-establish po na namin, in-establish na po namin yung clear lines ng kung sino yung dapat mag approve uh, Next is, yung... Ano nga po, isa pong kinocomplain nila, yung number 10 provision na pang na TSPC ka, dapat probationary yung accreditation mo after the TSPC. At sa, madami rin mga provider po nagko-complain doon. So actually, nakinig, nakikinig talaga kami sa provider, kaya tinanggal din namin siya sa new circular. So hindi na po sila magiging probationary. And yun last po, kasi dati, yun na nga, quality quality issue, pwede ka na mag-TSPC. So, uh, we were dis uh, discussing uh, within PhilHealth kasi nga, uh, it, uh, yung basis nito is legal, like I, I've uh, mentioned earlier, which is uh, yung pag-hold ng claims except those under investigation. So, dapat hindi quality po ang maging basis, hindi quality ang maging basis with the TSPC, but a legal investigation po. So, yun po yung mga nakita namin mga gray areas in the policy na dapat uh, ayusin po namin. Para po, kasi pag tinignan nyo yung old circular, parang mga mother statement or parang napaka-broad na hindi, hindi siya exact. Even the accountability or yung sino yung pipirma, hindi siya exact, uh, Madam Chair. So, we, we sought to fine-tune the circular, Madam Chair. Uh, for the benefit of our provider po and due process like our president uh, CEO po to assure due process. Thank you, okay. Madam Chair. Uh, Dr. David, so you mentioned nga, uh, ito yung mga advantages, no? And uh, na-clarify nyo in the recent circular, but meron din uh, mga disadvantages doon sa recent circular. So we recognize yung paglalagay po ninyo that you said that previously, um, walang nakalagay sino ang magsaserve ng TSPC. So, in the previous uh, uh, practice, sino po ang nagbibigay? Either RVP or PCEO prior to this circular? 
Kung silent, pero ano po ang nasa inyong guidelines? Actually po, Madam Chair, uh, nag-establish lang kami nung uh, 2019. Uh, uh, naglabas po kami ng internal memo, OCO memo, na si President po namin ang dapat mag-approve uh, ng mga TSPC. So the RVP will recommend and the President will approve. Pero internal po kasi siya, internal memo. And we deemed it necessary na dapat malaman po ng lahat ng mga partner facility, uh, partner providers natin and professional kung sino po yung sole authority to approve the TSPC. Thank you po. Thank you, uh, Dr. David. So you mentioned earlier kanina that TSPC is not considered a penalty. Tama po? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, so my question is, what then will be the penalty after fraud is proven? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, may I refer to, uh, kasi yung circular po na yan, it's a shared circular between health finance and legal. So anything okay. legal, baka pwede po I can refer to our legal counterparts. I, are there either anyone, at any yeah. bottom? Anyone from uh, legal? So can you respond to my, to my question? Sorry. Anyone from legal? Uh, yes, uh, attorney. Attorney Barbado from PhilHealth PHAD. Actually, Madam Chair, during TSPC, a validation investigation will be conducted. If a, the evidence is found that, uh, that fraud was committed, a case will be filed with our prosecution department. But if there is no evidence uh, that we can uh, obtain, uh, the case will be dismissed, Ms. Madam Chair. Ano to? Um, admin case? Yes, Madam Chair, admin case, but can be also be a criminal case if uh, evidence are warrants. Okay, sige. Uh, thank you. Um, another question is, in the recent circular compared to the previous circular, it seems that na omit yung process like the validation and feedback. Tama ba? Kasi silent po doon, uh, Dr. David. Yes, Madam Chair. I explain ko yung validation and feedback. Kasi... <clears throat> uh, if you can see here, kanina ito yung, if you can refer to this uh, ano, presentation. Yes, ito yung na-mention mo na ad uh, disadvantage before yung notice of suspension, right? Yes, pa, pa. Uh -oh. And then, there's this uh, part of the process, it's the verification and validation and the feedback. So, yung uh, current circular, wala silent kayo. Yes, Madam Chair. Ganto kasi, if you will look at the circular as a whole, yung under quality, meron, kaming, yung, meron din dyan validation and feedback. Nandun po yung 10 days. So, kung quality findings ka... Sa answer, sa answer. Particular, what provision in the circular? Ah, uh, check ko po. Madam Chair, sandali lang po. 29, 2018. Uh, huh? Itong nasa, nasa screen. And that's a screen natin is the recent one. I can show you the, I uh, know, I have also the 2018. Uh, 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 there. This one Madam is the 2018. Okay. Yes, Madam Chair. Ma uh, page 4, letter D. Page 4. Anong circular yan? 2018 uh, dash 0019. Okay, sir. Nakalagay dito. Yung nakita. Apo. Yeah. For any on specific rules, tama ba? Yes, ma yes madam chair. For any chair. negative monitoring finding, the concerned HCP shall be required to submit notarized justification letter within 10 days from the receipt of the feedback. Yes, okay? ma madam chair. Apo. Sir. Ito yes, pong circular na ito, ito yung inamend nyo yung 2013. And then, doon po sa repealing clause ninyo ng recent circular, sinabi nyo, ni-revise, wala naman pong nakastate na ganito dito sa recent circular nyo eh. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh -huh. 
Oh, di ba? Yeah. So, parang confusing po yung, uh, in fact, nakalagay po dito, part H. Oh, may repealing kayo dito. Yes, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, can I explain further regarding the 10 days? Sige, sir. Oh, yes. Kaya ako sinabi, Madam Chair, kasi uh, dati, quality and legal, yung pwede mag-TSPC. Under the quality, meron kang 10 days to give feedback bago kami mag-issue ng notice of corrective action. So, under quality po yon. Yung 10 days po na nakalagay sa TSPC, for quality po siya. So, meaning naka-impose na yung TSPC, pero since quality yung ma pwede niya maging finding, bawat finding within, during the TSPC period, dapat nag-feedback feedback ka pa rin, Your Honor. Sir, Dr. Lambert, alam mo, yes, kayo lang ang nakakaunawa nun kasi very quiet kayo doon sa recent. So, sana in-specify ninyo dito o kaya naglabas din kayo since sinabi nyo, o oh, dati, quality. So, procedural siya eh. So, parang yes, dapat uh, nilinaw nyo dito sa circular ninyo that, okay, tinake out natin ang quality, will focus more on legal dito sa 2021 uh, circular. Uh, ang Lagi kayong nag assume na eto ay uh, uh, prevalent pa rin, no? So, nandyan pa rin siya, nag exist pa rin. But from your end, from the healthcare provider's end, hindi nila, uh, naka, naka-focus sila doon sa recent palagi ninyo na uh, inilabas na circular. So, again, babalik po ako kasi doon sa, sa, Sa question ko, even with legal, wala po tayong verification and validation or feedback mechanism. Tinanggal po yun. Kasi tingnan nyo po ito, nakalagay po dito doon sa inyong circular, notice of findings. Okay, suspension not yet effect effective. Tapos ito, dito po kayo naglagay non-extendable three calendar days from the receipt. And then answer na. And then you can just refer here. No? So, uh, kung pwede lang malaman, uh, if we read your circular plainly, this is the process being uh, shown. No? Ito, nasa, nasa, nasa screen natin. So, siguro ipakita niyo po yung process, uh, what is lacking in this diagram. Anlin po ang nawawala dito. If you can walk us through your process. Doon sa karit, Mr. Ma Ay, Madam Chair. Yes po, yes po. Oh, yeah. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, ang, ang, natanggal lang to, ang natanggal po talaga is uh, yung TSPC, yung period na yun is for investigation na siya, Madam Chair. Hindi na siya for, hindi na hindi na siya for quality validation or uh, quality monitoring or validation. So, kaya po, purely legal process po yung uh, TSPC uh, ngayon, Madam Chair. Kaya yung okay, sir. Um, explain mo na lang sa amin, saan nagsimula ang notice of findings? Ito, ito. Ayan. Saan niya nagsimula? Ano pa yung Madam Chair, uh, pwede yan nagsimula kasi uh, ba may monitoring tayo, may monitoring tool, ay may mon monitoring process. Uh, pang, may, pang merong finding yung facility, mag-feedback tayo sa kanila to justify kung uh, hindi, na, hindi na refute yung kanilang finding, uh, Dinideliberate po ito ng isang committee within PhilHealth, uh, the subcom accreditation subcom committee. Sila po yung nagde-decide kung quality pa to, kasi kung quality, bibigyan lang po natin sila ng notice of corrective action. Pero pong legal po siya, ibibigay na po natin sa legal office yung uh, finding. Sa legal office po, magkoconduct po ng initial investigation po yung ating pro-legal office. At pang may strong evidence siya na yung fraud uh, that is in the facility or with the provider is rampant or uh, parang may pattern, doon po siya nag issue ng notice of finding sa uh, facility. 
Tapos po, uh, kung hindi po uh, na hindi po sumagot o hindi na refute yung notice of finding, ilalagay na po ng ating pro-legal of uh, pro-legal uh, st- uh, officer na doon sa fact finding investigation report kung gust kung kailangan po mag-impose ng TSPC. So, ganun po yung process, Madam Chair. Okay, I think uh, that's what you are missing in the uh, latest circular. Sir, the three days uh, non-extendable, uh, ano pong basehan ng three days? Uh, sabi nyo, with due process, no? so ito yung isa na nakita din namin na parang very short for a hospital or healthcare providers to respond. Yes, Madam Chair. Can I refer you to our ano, Attorney Barbado? Attorney Barbado? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. As, uh, as Dr. David earlier said, during the in the existing policy or the previous policy, there is no uh, opportunity for the hospital to answer or to explain the findings against them. Here in the new policy, Madam Chair, as part of due process, we give the hospitals opportunity to refute the findings of the legal department. And the reason be for the three days, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, is that uh, there's an urgency to to prevent the continuous uh, payment or disbursement of payment to claims that uh, the pilot has evidence that it was could have probably accrued from fraud or irregularities. So there is a urgency, Madam Chair, to resolve the issue. That's why we impose a three-day period to an- for the hospital to answer the allegations or the findings. Attorney Barbado, so yung number six in letter H of uh, 2018 circular, na 10 days na minention nyo. So saan po yung 10 days na yon? Sinabi nyo po walang pagkakataon ang hospital to explain? I thought 10 days po ang ibinigay ninyo to respond. Uh, Madam Jill, as uh, Dr. David said, yung 10 days po yan doon po sa quality issues po. Hindi po siya sa legal. After po kasi ng quality issues po, uh, i-refer po nila yan sa legal for investigation. So dahil nga po ang present policy ngayon is po, uh, purely legal na po. So wala na po yung ganyang uh, proseso sa legal po. Kaya once we have a finding na po, we will give the hospitals uh, opportunity to respond. Even then, Attorney Barboa, yung three days po for legal is actually very short. no? Kahit pa sabihin nyo, pag quality issue siya, may 10 days ka to respond, I think the more that we extend the number of days for legal issues. no? So I believe yung three days ay hindi po enough. Um, w- one last question. Uh, on the related or all claims, no? I think kay Dr. David, uh, if you can explain lang yung... Um, uh, all claims will be affected. Attorney David. Ay, Madam Chair. Ay, Dr. David po. Si Attorney Barbado. Ah, yeah, sorry. Po, Attorney David. Yes. Uh, Dr. David, yes. Yes po. Can you explain that? Kasi parang ako for me, uh, ano, it's like tantamount to outright denial of due process of other claims ang um, kung sabihin nyo na merely related lang siya. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you po. Uh, ito po, yung extent po kasi, like I discussed earlier, depende po sa investigation ng pro-legal po natin, ay namin sa PhilHealth, kung, uh, kung yung findings niya is, uh, kung lahat, kung, kung yung pattern is spread, uh, rampant po doon sa facility. Like, uh, sinabi ko example, may detect po siyang, kunyari, ghost patient, may ghost patient, uh, ghost claim at yung ghost claim na yon uh, sa hospital niya na detect eh hindi lang hindi lang sa isang type of case or procedure nakita niya may pneumonia ghost claim may UTI ghost claim may hypertension ghost claim etc cetera, etc cetera. nandami so our pro legal our pro legal can recommend uh, imposing a TSPC to all claims kasi pwede pong lahat any claims can be involved pero po kung nakita nila uh, ng, ng pro-legal na yung pattern is only on one specific type of claim. For example po, upcasing lang pneumonia. Puro pneumonia lang nakita po nila. Or uh, 
uh, kaso ng dialysis, puro dialysis lang pong ghost claim yung nakita nila, uh, pwedeng uh, case-specific na lang po yung ITTSPC nila. So pwedeng pneumonia lang po, pwede pong uh, dialysis po. Yun po yung... Uh, Yun po uh, yung explanation po namin do sa extent po, Madam Chair. Yun, parang for me ha, uh, parang sobrang hard for the hospitals no, na meron kayong ganon na suspicion kaagad to the related claims. no. So paano mo sasabihin na yung good naman siya na claims, good claim siya pero isasama mo siya and uh, that will... You, you will not pay the specific facility kasi may nakita kayo na isang kaso na suspicious. So, um, ako, feeling ko yung, there's a question doon sa merit nung magiging uh, decision nyo that warrant the, suspe the suspension of the uh, accreditation of the facility. So, ang hirap nung ang basihan natin ay mere probabilities and uh, suspicion lang. Um, 